Hello everyone. In previous two sessions towards that is introduction to animal classification, we have discussed what do you mean by hierarchy and types of classification and different terminologies like segmentation, coelom or the body cavity. So in this session, we'll see the definition of species and how the animals are classified. So definition for species. So as we have seen, what do you mean by species like the biological species concept? So species are defined as the populations of individual that can produce viable offsprings. For example, if you consider a group of animals, for example, as dog, so they breed within their population. They cannot breed with the cat population. So then only we can tell they belong to specific species. Is can, uh, can hybridization occur? That is, yeah, there are chances. There are some genetically modified organisms. So there also hybridization occurs. So probably the most well-known definition for the species is this. That is, the species is defined as the population of an individual that can produce viable offsprings. And coming to morphological species concept. So depending on what they have classified. So classified as the same species if organisms fit into same morphological criteria as it is given by Kels Linnaeus. So he is, as I have said, he is the father of taxonomy. And there are different types of classification related to the species like phylogenetic species concept and many more. So we should know the phylogenetic species concept. Species are the group of organism that share single common ancestors. So depending on what, like depending on morphology or the characters. So we should know this concept. So as I was telling about phylogeny, so it is very important term now uh, in this era, like uh, many prominent scientists and many researchers are working on phylogeny, like the evolution history of a group of an organism such as tribe or the racial group. As you can see in the picture, the bacteria, archaea and the urachia. So bacteria are the first clad. So that is why the first kingdom that is Monera we are having. So archaea we are having the eukaryotes under that we are having the archaea and coming to the last one eukaryotes there we are having the larger animals like entamoeba slime molds animals fungi plants so this is how the phylogeny works so we'll see some examples how phylogeny tree can be constructed so if you see this uh, large phylogeny tree like this you cannot have any much idea but when you see the simple phylogeny tree like as you can see in the top species 1 species 2 species 3 so the common root the common root region is divided into two first so what happens from one ancestor they are dividing into two but once the lineage is running into species 1 there is one more species which is coming out so that will become the species 2 so that will be called as nodal region so that is common for common ancestor for both species 1 and species 2 so this is how we can construct the simple phylogenetic tree so here the example as i was telling see how the fishes the lizards or the reptiles of the birds the reptiles and also the mammals how they are constructed under the simple phylogenetic tree uh, in which region they are divided so as you can see jaws which made the difference between the hagfish and different types of salamander and perch and lungs then came the amphibians later claws and nails made the difference between the reptiles and later four chambered heart which we can see in crocodiles in reptiles also but it is the only one uh, reptile which comes uh, under four chambered heart and feathers which made difference from the reptiles and the birds and later the mammillary gland and fur which made the difference in different types of uh, uh, mammals so this is how the simple phylogeny tree can be 
constructed and coming to last that is classification of animals in general so these all characters we need to study in detailed in your coming classes so in this semester you will be studying about the invertebrates so as the animals are classified into two different types that is vertebrates and invertebrates vertebrates and invertebrates so in vertebrates usually they are having the fish amphibians reptiles birds and mammals but whereas in invertebrates we are having the protozoans flatworms different types of annelids echinodermids arthropods and mollusks these are how the animals are classified so for in coming class we'll study in detail about phylum porifera that is sponges so in this session we have studied about species concept and phylogeny and related to classification of animals on what basis they are differentiated as i was telling vertebrates and invertebrates vertebrates they are classified depending on the presence of backbone and notochord but whereas invertebrates they do not possess any different types of uh, bones so they are classified into invertebrates so that's about this session so thank you